kitty would like to say hello, say hi. Hello friends, welcome to Makeup History and Conspiracy Theory. My name is Nena and on this channel we discuss all things history, conspiracies, urban legends while I do my makeup. You're going to need to buckle up for this week's video because we're going to be talking about the chemtrail conspiracy theory. While I was doing the research for this video, I found some things that I thought were very interesting. Grab your cafecito for the day. If you're gonna do your makeup with me, grab your makeup. I'm actually gonna be using the Meredith Duxbury X Morphe palette today. I, I also might dabble into a few of the green shades in this palette. I love conspiracies. And while I don't believe in all conspiracies, I love to just go on Reddit and find like random conspiracies. I don't know if it's just like having something to like read and deep dive into that is really fascinating. I personally think I really like conspiracies because I just like hearing people's opinions on certain things. Do your own research or don't, whatever your preference is. For me, it's very much just a case by case basis. I personally will form my own opinion on certain things and people can agree, people can disagree. That I think the main goal is to be able to have an open, honest conversation with people. With that being said, <laughs> Let's get into what chemtrails are. I was literally about to say in the mid 1900s. In the mid 1990s, the United States Air Force actually published an article on weather modification. Due to the rise of popularity of the internet, the internet forums, people took this article and went crazy. And chemtrails that planes were leaving behind, they began to speculate that the United States was essentially trying to use these chemical trails as a form of poisoning people. So that's where the chemtrail conspiracy started was on the internet, like a lot of our favorite crazy ass conspiracies. Popular theories as to what this quote unquote poison that was being spread through chemtrails were mind control, sterilization. People started to speculate that we're modifying the weather, which put a pin on that weather modification because initially that's what started this whole chemtrail conspiracy. The conspiracy essentially regained popularity in the early 2000s because a popular late night radio host by the name of Art Bell started talking about the conspiracy People were actually super pissed about this. They began to send letters and they were calling federal officials like complaining. They didn't think it was a conspiracy. They thought it was real, like if this was truth. The United States had to release a statement saying, this is not like a chemical thing going out. This is a normal thing that happens with aircrafts. They basically said that they did research on this and that no, that these chemtrails are not poisonous for people. They're actually considered contrails. What these streaks you see in the sky or planes leaving behind as they're, you know, flying by, it's actually water vapor. And the reason why it stays for such a long time, because of the altitude, that's why it kind of lingers for so long. So remember how this whole conspiracy started. The United States released that article on weather modification, aka cloud seeding. I feel like people low-key got lost in the sauce. Something that really intrigued me when I was doing the research for this is one, the fact that weather modification and cloud seeding is actually a real thing. Instead of focusing so much on the chemtrails, people should be focusing on the cloud seeding. Now, here's the thing. The article was posted in the mid 1990s, 1996 to be exact. However, cloud seeding has existed since the Vietnam War, where they actually used it as a form of warfare um, and essentially used cloud seeding to keep the monsoon season going longer. What is cloud seeding, you ask? Let me tell you. Cloud seeding actually increases uh, rain or snow in certain areas. Now, they say that this is basically used in order to prevent more natural disasters like hurricanes, hailstorms, things like that. And um, it basically prevents severe weather or it is actually used to increase the water supply. One of the main chemicals that is used in cloud seeding is a chemical by the name of silver iodide, not iodine, iodide. 
found a video that was published on, I believe, ABC. I'm going to leave it linked down below and I'm going to show a clip of it really quickly. Cloud seeding is most successful in wet years, so this was a huge winter for them. They actually stopped early because Mother Nature was given up so much. Now, studies have shown that the environmental impacts from the silver iodide on the current scale, there are no impacts uh, to snow or rain also downstream, so it doesn't impact, you know, the other weather. They do anticipate at least 200 more ground cloud seeders in the future, and the federal government has committed 2.6 million dollars to seeding so they were essentially saying that like cloud seeding is this great thing no negative consequences on people or the environment when i actually looked into this specific chemical iClinic.com published an article saying that this is essentially a toxin for people and according to this website people who are at an increased risk for silver iodide toxicity are people who obviously work with the chemical in like a laboratory setting miners also have an increased exposure to it as well people who live in areas being used for cloud seedings <laughs> if you're curious like me i wanted to see what some of the symptoms were for silver iodide toxicity and let me just list a few just to show you how toxic this chemical can be for people. Some of the symptoms include skin irritation, gastrointestinal irritation, respiratory problems, vomiting, diarrhea, kidney damage, brain damage, and there were still a few others that I didn't really look at because I was like, okay, that's more than enough for me to know that this chemical is no good for people. I know there's all this talk on these crazy floods that have been happening in Dubai where cloud seeding is actually very popular. You should start looking at areas that are using this cloud seeding on a more regular basis to see the long-term effects that can have on environments, on people. I believe that the chemtrail myth has been debunked. That's my opinion. However, like I said earlier, we should be kind of looking at weather modification with more skepticism because that seems kind of wild to me. So this is the final look. I'm actually not mad at it. I feel like I match my little alien friend over here. I did want to blend out this corner because it's like low-key bugging me real quick. That's going to do it for today's video. What do you think? Do you think chemtrails are real? How do you feel about the weather modification and cloud seeding? Let me know in the comments down below. I will see you in the next video. Bye!